initiating factor is invalidating factor. So you got valid contract. To have a valid contract, you must have four essential elements, isn't it? What are they? Offer, acceptance, consideration, intention to create legal relations. So assuming you have all this and you think you have a valid contract, the moment any one of these initiating factors creeps in into your contract, your contract can become void or voidable. Look at how the chapter defines it. Huh? You must read your book last year. It's just to make that point that I brought my book today. Although it's very heavy. Okay? Invalidating factors. It invalidates your otherwise valid contract. Found it as a difference between void voidable in the book. So I just saw it. Uh, page one five nine.
charged person entering into a contract. At that point in time, you didn't have the mental capacity. So let's look at incapacity. When it comes to incapacity, uh, contracts entered into by underage people. What is the age of majority in Singapore? Who is the major in Singapore? 21. The age of majority is still 21 in Singapore. But contractual age has been lowered to 18. Right? Why was contractual age lowered to 18? That means you can now enter into contracts the moment you turn 18. You don't have to wait till 21. Why was that done? You all know the history? Because they lowered the age for people to start a business. Remember government was encouraging entrepreneurship, young people to become entrepreneurs? They lowered the age for company directors from 21 to 18. Sole proprietors, partners, all this age got lowered from 21 to 18. Then, after that, there was a problem. If these 18-year-olds can now start a business as a sole proprietor, as a partner, as a company director, they don't have the capacity to enter into contracts, then how? Ah, so the Civil Law Act was also amended so that everything can be done neatly. Contractual age and the age to start a business to be a company director is 18. But the age to vote is 21. So age of majority, that means major, you become a major, is still 21. So at 18 years old birthday, you don't go and celebrate with butterfly and key yet. Huh? Don't have it yet. Okay? Don't say contractual age lower already. So at 18, now I can have my party already. I don't have to wait till 21st birthday party to celebrate freedom. When you get married, how? At what age you don't need consent of anybody, just the other person? 21 <coughs> still. That age has not been dropped down. If you are below 21 but above 18, how? <laughs> Parents' consent. Still required. You can get married, huh? don't, don't be unhappy about it. You can still get married, you cannot do it to wait till you're 21. Well, what if you are below 18? <laughs> wait for what? <laughs> for all the children to be born. <laughs> Whose consent is required? You can still get married, no, below 18, so long as you're not a child, huh? not below 16, huh? you can still get married. Effectively, under the penal code, a child is anybody below 14. For above 14 and up to 16, you are a juvenile. So anybody under 18 can still get married with the minister's consent. The minister will look at it. There's a minister in charge of every aspect of our life in Singapore, right? All businesses and all that will come under Minister of Finance. You have to apply that for approval. Because we don't really recognize child marriages, right? We have some laws on all this, isn't it? But under special circumstances, example, the girl is pregnant, you need to legalize the child. The minister will give his consent. But he will ask you, okay, who's going to look after this child? This child? How is this child going to be brought up? And so on. Then after everything, uh, then he'll give the consent for you to get married. Okay? There's a bit of extra there. Okay. That doesn't mean get married too early, don't marry in haste and repent at leisure. Have you heard that? Okay. Contracts entered into with people under age can actually fall into valid, voidable or rectifiable contracts, you know. Be careful of that. So we go on to examine this. Who are people under incapacity? They may not just be under age, but they don't have the mental capacity. Intoxicated are drunken as well as drugged persons. Drug doesn't mean just an abusive substance. Huh? It can also mean you're under so much of medication that sometimes you drift in and out of conscience, right? Sometimes people are under very heavy sedation and all that. And you bring a contract there for them to sign. Can you imagine? 
they don't know what they're signing, you know. Okay, so that contract can actually be a voidable contract, always. Okay. My okay. Singapore, less than 21 years old, in UK, under 18, they lowered their age of majority. So 18 years old, you can enter into a contract. When is a contract binding on a person under the age of 18? So from now onwards, whenever they say minor, you put there under 18. A person under the age of 18, he can still enter into a valid contract, you know. Under 18, you can still enter into a valid contract. But that contract must be for necessary. There is a definition of necessaries in your book. Or it's a valid contract for employment. You have people under 18 working on part-time jobs and all that, right? Yeah, so long as it doesn't fall into a certain category where it's, what, you know, 11 years old, I think, child labor, right? That's exploitative. Okay. So they can still enter into contracts. So when it is either contract for necessaries or valid contract of employment, it binds both parties, both the minor and the other party, the employer. So long as it is for the benefit of the minor. So one more time, when our slides from now on talk about minor, it is a person under 18. Because our contractual age is 18. We must not confuse it. Huh? Okay. So, so long as it benefits the minor, it's a contract for health, for education, for employment. It is a valid contract. Okay? However, if the contract has terms that are exploitative, onerous terms, very difficult to perform these terms, <coughs> the minor feels very oppressed. He's being exploited to do something. Uh, then the contract may not be binding. There are cases of this. Okay? What are necessary? Section 3, sale of good set, SGA, sale of good set. Eh? It's in your book, this one in a little box. It says, the goods must be necessary for that minor's condition in life. You know, at every phase in our life, we have different goods that we require, isn't it? Okay? So it must be necessary for you at that point in your life. And whether it was suitable for its actual requirement at time of sale and delivery of the goods. So you have the case of mesh and inlay for this. Necessaries can include luxurious items, so long as suitable for that particular minor. So there are cases that say, uh, for a rich man's son, uh, gold items may be necessaries. Okay, come, let's look at it. Your necessaries defined on page 135. I want you to contrast page 136, uh, mesh and inman with fitness and planning. Contrast those two. Okay, so you must read your book, okay? In order to pass your exam, you must read your book. Okay? In mesh and inman, how many waistcoats did the guy already possess? Eleven fancy waistcoats. Then, no, sorry, he went to order eleven fancy waistcoats, right, from the tailor. When he already possessed numerous waistcoats at home, isn't it? So, does a minor need eleven fancy waistcoats at one point in time? You know what's a waistcoat? A waistcoat is more of a, it's, what do you call it? An extra item, right? It's a three-piece suit. Then you have a waistcoat, isn't it? Then over that you wear your jacket, right? You all know what's a waistcoat, right? Everybody? Huh? What? US 201. Now I have to say what is a waistcoat. <laughs> okay, your three-piece suit. You know what's a three-piece suit, right? I'm not talking about bikini and all that. Huh? Don't let your mind run away huh? at this point in time. Two piece, three piece, one piece. Guys, I'm talking about guys. 
your three piece suit. You wear a shirt, you wear your